are a supporter of the terrorist army who call themselves Temidor. You better leave right now because this isn't for you. But everyone else, welcome to Plus 95. I am George. Mingalaba, how are you? Are you well? Yeah, I am. I understand you are scouting for our spring revolution. So, can you tell us a bit more about it? Sure. Scouting is something we started doing more since the coup, and we do it using an app. Before the coup, a lot of people in the voluntary sector and firefighters, etc., use that app too. But after the f- February coup, we had to watch our districts, as you know, for our own safety, and we need to help and protect those who drew graffiti on the roads and walls, expressing their disapproval about the coup. So they needed to be warned when the army soldiers were spotted nearby. So we warned each other through that app. Basically, almost everyone, including taxi drivers, are giving pieces of news to help each other out. And they do that by putting that news online using this app. The main aim is we want to tip off the whereabouts and movements of the Sikwe. Now, you know, that name is given to the gender soldiers because they brutalize and they're Brutalizing behavior towards the public is just way, way below the human level. Can you tell us how many groups like yours are in Rangoon working like this voluntarily? And how many are there in a group? Just rough estimate. Sure. At least 200 people in one channel approximately. Most of the members are simply listening in. And much fewer people actually give out information they get from scouting actively. Some of the members are UGs, some are PDFs, and while they also listen in, they won't be giving out information for obvious reasons. There are many channels like this at every district form locally. Some have 200, 250, or some have even up to 1,000 members. I'm saying subscribe members, but some are not active anymore, either arrested, killed, and so on. How about if there were the land, that is the other side spying? Isn't it dangerous? How do you spot those? Sure, that's true. There are some Delans there online and some of our members got their phones seized by the Sikwe. So they do could be listening in, but normally we focus only on use of their routes and their numbers in their bunkers. So, uh, but we obviously never give out our movements or activities or routes. Hence, even if they are Delan listening in, they're not going to get any of our activities or whereabouts from our scout channel, really. Mm, interesting. Who actually encouraged you to do this scouting? Well, nobody did. But after the coup, we all had to protect our districts. So we found out about this walkie-talkie app, which was simply messaging by voice instead of typing. So by getting warnings about the movements or sequoia, sometimes using the Bluetooth if you have one, our comrades can avoid pumping into them. Hence, we find it very useful. So this way we can communicate better with each other and one doesn't need to give out the real profile either. So only by voice, we can exchange information. That's how we help each other. Can you let me know how you actually give out the information about the roots of sequoias? Well, yes. Uh, we know it, roughly the basic facts about the sequoia, such as their rest place, their routines, and so on. So as soon as somebody spotted their movements, they just come online and they say it in their own way. Occasionally, there are codes to be used, but that's not important. There are so many types of users, so just basically it's whatever they see or hear, which they think will be useful, they put it online. Can you tell us any instances whereby the UGs escaped from sequoias? or they managed to accomplish the mission successfully? Sure. To be honest, we don't know all on the channel. Okay, some are indeed UG. Some accomplished their missions because of the information we provided, but of course, there were instances where that was not the case. We heard afterwards about these through the word of mouth. So for example, if an explosion occurred in Tamwe, we straight away gave out the information on the traffic in and around that area, safe routes and the roads the Sikwe are coming from. Also, some protesters use certain paths, whereas some UGs use other paths. 
Sometimes we heard that there will be a protest at a certain place in advance. We don't want to know the exact location or time. We just put it online, the real-time situation of the area and surrounding places. And more often than not, because of that info, our Revolution Brothers escape safely, but obviously not always the case. So if you heard that your scouting helped our brothers to accomplish the mission safely, you must feel pleased too. Definitely. People are doing this on their own initiative, you know. Sometimes taxi drivers, even without passengers, they drive around the area to get the information with the sole aim of helping the revolution. Sure, the scout role in this spring revolution has been vital. There will come a time in future when the spring revolution museum will be established. How would you like to see the role of scouts expressed or documented there? Well, in my view, scouting is always going to be needed whenever there is an action or operation during a time like this to be carried out in a particular area. It's just a supporting role. In fact, our every citizen can help out this way. But how this role can be depicted in future, I'm not sure. Well, the voice on the app will be left behind, right? Yes, but the app has a limited amount of data it can hold. Uh, I mean, there's a limited amount of data the app can hold. So beyond that, that'll be auto-deleted. Yeah. So people tend to delete the chats as well once they get home or they rest place because their phones can be confiscated anytime, as you can imagine, and they can get into trouble. So... Well, one day in future, scouts can openly tell every day, everybody how they had gathered information and all the tales can come out that way. In my view, the role played by scouts in this revolution will be revealed in due course and leave an image. I see. Lastly, can you tell us how your life before and after the February 2021 coup has changed? Well, prior to the coup, in the five years that the country was run by NLD, led by Mei Su, we felt safe, secure in our daily life, and we knew we had someone, somewhere to turn to, you know, when, whenever we felt injustice. Well, that was a really good feeling. This view is not just mine, but the same for most people. So let's look at one example, the electricity situation, okay? So before NLD government, the electricity situation in this country was terrible. Then for five years when NLD was in power, it improved so much. But not only that, we always got warnings when and if there were going to be a power cut. And we were told about the specific day and the time. No, they were all announced in advance, which meant that we felt like we were treated with due respect, you know, like a human being. But since the coup, however, all of that had gone. Now they do what they like, they cut or give out electricity as they wish. You cannot expect any fairness or decency or anything like that anymore. Electricity cuts happen all the time without any warning. Also, random house raids in the middle of the night in the name of checking up on the visitor list happen on a regular basis. Anyone can make up stories about you and accuse you of doing this and that and simply report it to the so-called authorities to create trouble for you. So compare that to the five years period before the coup under the NLD government when we lived our lives safely and peacefully. It is a world apart. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking.